justice, mercy, humility. These three please the Lord. The cry for justice has gone out even in our own city as people have filled the streets demanding justice. Angry protesters with signs saying an end to social uh, profiling, racial profiling, an end to unjust treatment. Not only here in Wichita, but across our nation. And it's not just them. Even though some progress has been made, there still remains a gender bias which prevents equal pay for equal work. And the poor, they have no collective voice. No protesters fill the streets on their behalf. And so one by one, we see them with their signs made out of cardboard boxes on street corners. And a cry for justice. Social, gender, racial, economic injustice continues in our own city, in our country, and in our world. The question for us is, what is our response Our typical response is small to nothing at all. How many of us showed up to the public picnic this past summer that was thrown for us by Chief of Police Gordon Ramsay so that we might, as a a public, get to know the police better and have great relationships? Did did anyone go? Let's just see a show of hands. Why not? Our typical response, if it's not our issue, if it's not our problem, then it's not our problem. Our typical response is muted with the realization that big problems defy easy answers. They defy one person solution and they're so complex, it leaves us with a, a great inertia that's even hard to get off of center. And yet, there are so many in our congregation who have looked around in our own city and in our community and have been moved in some way to act. And many of you are are now volunteering at, at Passageways Living Center for our homeless veterans. Or you're going down to the Lord's Diner and serving a meal. Or with the the Lions Club, Habitat for Humanity boys and girls clubs, all different kinds of ways which really bring to bear a a mercy to our city. But what about justice? We really don't know what to do with justice. I guess because it's so political. You know, it seems like there's a democratic justice and and then there's a republican justice and, well, which side and then what do I do? And and then it, it involves the secular world with systems that we have benefited. We are the major benefactor of the current system of the way things are. We are citizens of the most powerful, prosperous country in the world. And for us to take an interest in the injustice that we have caused in the world would perhaps then cause us to lose our benefits and status. Even as a local congregation of ascension, it just seems that we would derail and distract ourselves from our our common core mission that we've been given by Jesus, and that is to to make disciples who are fully formed followers of Christ. How does justice fit into that? Not quite sure, and so we just go with what we know. And yet with all of the challenges, and they are big, and with all of the problems that you could get derailed and distracted, in which many congregations have simply turned into a a social agency for justice rather than a gospel of Jesus gathering. Even with all of these challenges, still it pleases the Lord 
when we act justly, when we love mercy, when we walk humbly with our God. And so as then we, we gather here, we find then that we're left to still answer the question. And what will we do? Well, as we listen to the world and its definitions of justice, we find that we really need to have it defined. What, what is this? When the world, and in their mind, they think of justice, it is a, a sense of, of doing what is right, of a standard of fairness. If there's two cookies on a plate, you don't get both of them. You get one and I get one. And if your cookie's really big and mine's really small, we're going to break yours up. So, you know, we've, we've got equal amount of cookie here. That's what the world has in mind with justice. It's fair. And that, you know, initially seems like a, a pretty good plan until you, you begin to play it out. And we find then that this definition, this mindset of, of justice is far too weak compared to what God has in mind. Because with, with justice being fair, this is where the, the whole idea and the laws of, of separate but equal came from in history. And we look back on it in horror as we realize what a, a dismal failure it was. Because you can have everything fair and equal without any love for the other. Without any mercy being shown or humility in the heart. No, God's justice, true justice, goes to the very root. And it, it may provide equality, but then again, it may not. Because the main concern for God isn't the fairness, but the other person. The other person, regardless of their gender, regardless of their social class, or even their, their skin color, every one of us have been created in the image of the living God. And our worth and our value of how we are to be treated then comes from His gift of creation that, that we are also one for whom Christ has died and for whom He dearly loves. So, as we move forward in justice and we see well what could be done and what could not be done we find that you know a law isn't going to really deal with the heart because I could keep the laws and still despise you have no respect for you but the way laws work is through enforcement you know. and so having been forced now to treat you fairly in my business. I will not give you one more dollar than I owe you, though. I will not give you one more minute of my time than is required. And I will not be any more helpful behind the retail counter than my employer demands of me. Real change, real justice comes not through the law, but through a relationship, an ongoing relationship with Jesus. With this Father in the heavens, with the Holy Spirit. There in this relationship, we find a whole new heart. And the really good news is that you, you don't have to... Um, you don't have to win an election for this kind of justice. You don't have to make this country a Christian nation or any nation Christian. You don't have to pass a law or take up arms and win a revolution. Because this kind of justice is the ongoing life with Jesus. It is the life in which the Holy Spirit is transforming you on the inside to have the image of Christ for the sake of others. 
It is the life by grace which God is forming in you the same justice and mercy and humility of Jesus. But he doesn't just zap you. You're not just made into people who follow into justice. You have to go to the cross. And so I invite you now, come, come close to the cross and see Jesus crucified. See the bloody mess that he is, his suffering and his dying and ask, why is he there? Not the theological answer, so your sins are forgiven. Why is he there suffering? It, it is for you, but the reason that it is for you is that you and I have this great need that we couldn't fix. We didn't have the power to overcome. We didn't have within our resources to make right. And so it made us the foreigner, the excluded, the alien, the refugee. It made us the enemy of God with no rights and no abilities to fix this. And so Jesus comes to bear with his justice and his mercy there at the cross. And he provides what we could not do for ourselves. And not because there was a rule that regulated that he must go and do this. Jesus is doing all of his providing at the cross for no other reason than the love that is in him for you. For this kind of change in your heart, you have to come even closer to the cross and hear the conversation that's going on there between Jesus, his mother, and his beloved disciple. As you heard in that conversation, just as Jesus gave his mother into the care of his beloved disciple, so Jesus has given the care of the widow, the orphaned, the immigrant, the refugee, the excluded, the outcast, the enemy, into the hands of his beloved followers with these words, Beloved, love one another as I have loved you. As John heard Jesus give him the charge and the care of his widowed mother, John's heart is not being compelled by a rule, but the will of God, that it would please Jesus, that it would care for his mother. He is motivated not by the law, but by love. And so as we see, so we receive as well this new heart to join in this loving work of caring. And finally, take one more step towards the cross. And there, consider him who hangs before you. And there, consider who you were before and without Jesus. You were a slave to sin. You were condemned to die. You were consigned to eternal damnation. But Jesus, from the cross, says the very words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As you hear Jesus, consider your own sins before him of injustice, of no mercy, of lack of humility against your fellow human beings. And there in that confession, hear Jesus speak directly to you that your sins are forgiven, that you have been set free, that you are loved, that you are are no longer the outsider, the enemy, 
the foreigner, the refugee. You are family, adopted into it by the resurrection of Him who hangs there in the cross. We are a people of justice because there are no other kinds who follow Jesus. We are a people of mercy and humility because there are no other kind who follow Him. But we grow into this. And it is a process of a step closer and closer to the cross and, and a daily realization of who I am and who I would be without Him, and yet I am not without Him. I am with you, Jesus. And the Spirit is transforming me into the likeness of Christ so that it's not hard to be a people of justice, but it would be hard not to be. And as we gather person and person and person as a congregation, we begin to ask ourselves, well, how can we together be so much more than we could be individually in bringing justice to our city, to our state, to our world? Not because of the laws, but the heart. And so our spiritual practice today, which if I had my slides in there, You'd see it, but it, it's a spiritual practice of service in which you are invited first to pray that the Lord would lead you to see who, who needs a blessing today and serve in such a way that you maybe not even would be recognized. It would be a service in secret because it's about the other person and it's more than mercy, it's being Jesus and light and salt. It pleases the Lord. Not in such a way that, you know, we, we get into heaven, but it, it pleases Him because that's who His family is. So that sermon card, that take-home card's on the table as you head out. It'll also be on the, the web page later today or tomorrow. So the Lord be with us and bless us as we serve. Amen. I invite you to see.